Bom dia. Good morning, everyone. For parents, it was one of those nights. But I'm here with you guys, and I'm excited to move and to breathe and make sure my AirPods are working. Let me just um, put my hair up because I left my scrunchie in the room. So, you know, I'm not going back into the dead zone to get a scrunchie because the baby's asleep. <laughs> um, all right. So, I hope you have a comfortable area. I do have some props. You don't need them. I'll show you an option without them. Okay. So, we're going to start with our mechanical inhale. I just need to make sure, I know there's one person watching now. Can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Please. Just so I can make sure I don't have to, um, I don't have a whole bunch of video without audio. So just a mic check. Uh, perfect, thank you, you're magical. All right, so I'm going to start laying down just because a lot of people had a problem opening up the ribs. Today, I'm not going to talk about belly breathing. I'm only going to talk about more diaphragmatic inhale, which is gonna go into the core. We're gonna talk about relaxing these muscles, okay? So. I have my trusty watch here, and I usually use my timer to make sure that I don't get lost, okay? So first all I'm going to do is, I'm going to lay down upside down so you can see me. I'm going to put my music down just a little bit. Just a little bit because, there, that's chilling. All right, so I'm gonna lay upside down so you can see me, okay? Real quick. It'd be nice, so I need to leave my clothes back here too, right? Right, 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 hold in. Okay, so upside down, you're going to take your hands right about there, you can see me. So I'm showing it from the top so you can see. Because I work on my ribs all the time, they're fairly soft. So when I lay down, they already kind of pop up. But if you have a hard time getting them to come up, because a lot of people, they could inhale, but their ribs didn't move that well. So all we're going to do is we're going to work for two full minutes on the inhale, and we're going to take our fingers and make little homes like this, okay? These little homes, they will hook into the ribs, and every time you inhale, you will open up the ribs, and every time you exhale, you will just relax the core and let your hands come in. Okay, so we're looking just for a concave relaxation of the core. Okay, we're going to do this for two minutes straight, starting now. Go. Again, your hands are in the ribs, and you're going to inhale, make sure everything is down. Exhale, and if you go, it's a lot easier. Inhale. When you inhale, your fingers might get kicked out. That's okay as long as you can feel the indent of the ribs. Exhale and just say. <sighs> if the ribs close, when you go, <sighs> be patient. They will open again when you're done with your exhale. Keep at it. Relax the perineal, all those bicycle seat muscles because they need to be opening up, almost like you're taking air through there as well. You have the natural curve of your spine, nothing pressing down. Start adding air to the ribs. See if you can expand. Can you imagine expanding like 360 degrees? You could do one rib at a time also. One rib at a time helps you because we can actually breathe in quadrants. So we can 
Keep the tension here and relieve the tension there. 30 seconds to go. Remembering that your liver is on your right, so if it feels stuck, sometimes your liver can actually get stuck to your diaphragm, so you can slightly push it down when you flare it, lightly, and it should feel like a tightness under your rib, and if you massage it, eventually it'll feel looser, and that's just because your liver does that, okay? And time. All right, so now we did a nice expansion. Now we're going to do the opposite, okay? So we're going to expand the ribs and we're going to be worried about the tightening. Let me come up because I think someone asked something. Oh, bon dia, meu amor. Okay, so now if you come up, you can see that your ribs, they should have relaxed. The reason why I wanted to do it at 7 a.m. is because I wanted to make sure my stomach is empty. So now we're going to look for the exhale on the floor, okay? We're going to exhale and we're going to stick our back down. And in order to pack our lats, Okay, the lat muscles, they wrap through the back. There are these muscles, and they're the muscles you kind of have to tense up when your breath wants to go up. So if the breath wants to go up and you tense up the lats, you can take them 360 a lot easier, okay? Um, so we're going to push against the knee slightly, okay? We're not looking for 100% contraction. We just woke up. We want to be kind to the body. So we're looking for like 30 to 50 at the most, cool? So we're going to do two minutes of that now. So, now we're going to make sure we put our feet down. If you're with me and you have hyperlordosis, doses, you have to make sure your feet are down, planted as well. So your feet are not just gonna be there dead. We're gonna just start working on the feet, okay? Whenever we put the feet down, we're going to start being aware of our body parts and that we're waking up with our body and checking it slowly as we go. So, for now, I'm going to wind my back in right i'm not going to lift my knees yet because it might be difficult so i'm going to wind my back in so i can fit my core inside right inhale we're going to worry about the exhale and on the exhale we're going to bring the knees up and do a push okay we're going to keep the 90 degree angle at the hip a 90 degree angle at the knees and a 90 degree angle at the foot for dorsiflexion okay so you're going to go, my back is going to come up, but I'm not so worried about the inhale now. I'm worried about proud posture and sinking. I'm going to show this that. Sinking into the navel to spine. So that means you're going to contract from the perineal. Contract, wind the hips over. This is a visual synesthetic cue because your back has to stick. Your ribs will close, right? And you're going to keep your perineal tight, close that zipper through the core, seal the heel with the ribs, wrap with the obliques, cool? Make sure you have a slight chin tuck that you're turning off, the sternocleidomastoid and all those muscles that usually are overworked. If you have a hard time turning this off, you can always put a small towel under your head, cool? So I'm going to start for two minutes, starting now. Knees are up, begin with your inhale. Again, like proud posture, inhale, and exhale. Hold it, feel what it feels like to really seal the core. If you are postpartum, I have to mention because there are a couple of ladies here, we're actually going to do this with the feet down. We're going to put our heels on the floor, cool? And you're going to push higher up because we want to teach the core how to close. So I'm going to do a minute like this and then I'll go back to the other way, okay? Inhale. Make sure the scapula is down and running towards opposite pockets. Exhale. Like the letter X. In here, you should be able to get a nice, deep burn of the core. Notice that I'm sealing the ribs, but I'm not sealing the chest. Continue. Use the winding of your hip to start warming up that breath. Good. 
most part when women stay here, everyone else will go and back up. If it's too hard to do both legs at a time, because it is harder, you do have to have a wider gauge. Keep breathing while I'm talking, please. You can put one leg up and one down, okay? Because usually it's in the morning and I'm only using about 30 to 50% power, I can do both legs up. Unless my sciatic nerve is killing me, then I have to do one at a time to make sure I align my heel with my glute. And time, cool. So now, because we're there, we're going to start relaxing the hips. And we're going to do that by taking our knees to opposite sides. So we're going to, this view sucks. I might turn this sideways. Okay. We're going to lay down with our legs forward, just like here, and we're going to keep our breath with us. And now we're going to keep our feet active, and we're just going to breathe in and breathe out for extension. As you try to touch down, my goal is this knee down. So I'm stretching the iliacus. So I'm stretching right on the hip through the side, okay? Inhale, come to the middle. Exhale, go to the other side. Let's do these a couple more times. So that was one, two. Contract the glute at the end to get a better extension of the hip flexor. Notice I'm keeping my back glute and I'm still finding where my posture is without too much tension. I just woke up this is a perfect opportunity to teach my body how to go about the day. Good, then from here, we're going to turn on to our side, okay? And we're going to get up. Nice and easy because we have to be kind to our body. Okay, and we're going to start from sitting position. So on sitting, we're going to do the same. We're going to just take a couple of inhales and exhales together since we already did a little bit of that. But we're going to start box breathing, right? You can do this on the floor as well if you feel like sitting is still hard for you. The box breath is going to have an inhale. We're going to hold for four seconds. We're going to exhale. We're going to hold for four seconds. Inhale, expand as much as you can. Um, and exhale, make up your ribs as small as you can and contract all the way from the perineal. If you need to feel for the postpartum women, you can always take a piece of material, fold it and put it there so you can understand that that area is actually contracting. For me, I usually use like the glute muscles, right? So your, your muscles that are on top of the sit bones, if you contract them, you will immediately kind of pop up, you see? It's a big muscle. So if you rotate the hip and contract, you're going to be able to kind of like synesthetically feel um, you sit right in the middle of your perineal, right? Right in the middle of it. Um, and then that's when you know you're in alignment with your spine, cool? Okay, so we are looking for, um, if you cannot sit like this, if you need to, please, yoga block, cool, on the knees. We might pop back down because I did forget one, one exercise. Some days I wake up with my, um, hips really tight and I have to start with the blocks. Okay, so my hips can get used to being in this position as I go on, it gets easier, cool? So again, we're just going to do inhale and exhale here. We're going to do for five, okay, box breaths, cool? And starting, again, put your arms down. If you need to, for me, I always try to track my elbows to the ground and I can keep my lats packed, but not forward, I have to turn it like a key backwards. So very proud Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman if you're a woman or just, just a super proud posture, okay? If you were the most powerful being in the world, how would you walk around, okay? So starting now, we're going to do five breaths. Start with your inhale, be patient. Go for five. Hold. Down.
last exhale. Hold it tight, make the sensation deeper. Hold, 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 hold very tightly like a corset. Feel the contraction deeper. It's about feeling. The transverse should burn when you find it. And relax. Shake it off a little bit. You can take your hands, put it in the back real quick for a chest opener. All we're going to do is take our hands and put it behind us actively. So we're going to open up our fingertips, put it behind us. Nice and wide. What would happen if you can spread your fingers as wide as you can? Put, put your palm down. And then I'm going to do the spiral, the spiral that we learned how to do from the feet. I'm going to go upwards towards my back, right? So I'm going to externally rotate my shoulder and actively push off of my hands. So instead of just pushing and stretching, I'm going to activate those muscles, push off the ground as if I could hold myself and just breathe into an open chest and go around those hands. If you extend all the ligaments and muscles with a slight contraction of the opposite muscles, you should feel it slightly different. And stretching with awareness means you can actually put the sensation to where it's tight. It might be a particular tiny place, but can you find it is the question. And then come forward. Roll those shoulders forward. So you can go like like a dance, right? But all you're trying to do is actually get some mobility in the scapula, right? Because the scapula, they're known as our internal hands. They're actually shaped like hands. And then when we're young, let's go the opposite way. We actually feel the environment through the scapula. And then as we grow, we become quadrupeds. So we're actually supposed to crawl a lot to keep the scapular mobility the way it's supposed to be because it's a ball in the socket joint, just like the hip. Cool. I'm going to go back down, like I mentioned, I did forget a couple of stretches, so let's do that. I'm going to do an open book. You can use a yoga block or a foam roller, cool. You're going to pop it right in between your knees. Because I have, um, the joints on my legs are kind of loose, I either put a yoga block up here and one down there, or I put a whole foam roller. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. This is also, um, it's for the hip, for the back, but also for the scapula. Oh snap, again, I put this one here on my foot. I'm gonna do it this way just so you can see it. I'm going to put this hand down, right? Lay my head down, and I'm going to, there it's better. I'm going to take this top hand. I'm going to reach it past the hand that's on the floor. Then I'm going to Caress myself back until this shoulder can land on the floor. And then I will open up the hand back. And then I will come back. Hand to chest, like a bow and arrow. So I'm going to slide, go forward, feel my scapula reaching forward. Come back, I'm going to do that five times, okay? Open up, keep the shoulders down. That's two. So again, you can inhale here to put air in the thoracic cavity and to stretch the back. And then you can start exhaling here to set the body. Four. And five. From there, we're going to get up nice and easy. We're going to be kind to our bodies. We're not getting up straight forward. Even though we're probably active and we can't do that, we spend most of our night laying down and stagnant, so we don't want to push it in the morning until the body feels good. And we're going to step into that power in a second. Cool. So again, and start reach, caress, come back, and then on one side you're going to feel more stiff than the other, and that's normal, you know. Make sure you're using your inhale to look for extension through the spine and alignment. If you're trying too hard, if this is a struggle, then you're doing it wrong. Try your best to relax your muscles as much as you can and to keep alignment as you twist. Twists are very important for digestion, 
very important for the spine to, to keep you moving. Wow, last one. Cool. Okay, now we can come up. And then from there, we're going to cat and cow. Okay, we're just making our way up to wake up. Cool. So, for cat and cow, I have a couple of things that I want to do. We're going to do um, five breaths with the inhale with the belly drop and exhale with, let's do three so we have time for all the breaths, right? I'm going to show it to you sideways. So I can do these breaths a couple of ways. Um, cat and cow is amazing because it gives you connection to the body on the floor and it, it, it lets you be, pack your lats a little easier. See how I'm twisting my shoulders? So you're going to inhale and you're going to start dropping. Your feet can be flat on the back, okay? And you're going to inhale and start dropping your hips down, meeting the scapula in the back, like you're going to pinch a pencil and looking up and then letting your belly sink in and your hips sink in, right? As you exhale, you can take your hands and slightly twist them inside and push, 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 push. Help expel all the air out and push through the knees and through the hands, through the feet for a deep contraction in the floor. So this is one. Go two. And go three. Good. From there, we're going to stop the center and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go inhale here. Exhale into power. So we're going to exhale into a slight contraction. Like I'm getting prepared to lift myself from the ground. Lift myself from the ground. So I'm slightly floating. See my knees? Okay, and then I'm going to wide my hip, pack my lats, and this is a beast plank. So we're just going to look for an inhale in a cat, and an exhale into beast plank, plank four or five times because it's an active one. Cool. So let's go inhale, go one. Exhale, into power. Remember sealing the zipper. Hold for one active breath. Go down, two. One active breath. Go three. Make sure your neck is with you and not ahead of you. If you need to slightly tuck your chin and feel like you're away from yourself, do that. I need to do that. Three. Can you contract deeper? So we're gonna explore the knees and the hips real quick. So now we feel uh, a little bit more powerful, so we're going to start going down um, to explore the hips, okay? I like this particular position for the hips because then I can do the ankle complex, the foot, the ankle complex. I can do the knee, so I can do dorsiflexion of the ankle, and I can start messing with the hip joint, right? With support from the back leg. Now this back leg as well, there are a couple of movements that our body is not used to anymore, and this is one of them. A lot of people can no longer sit like this. So we're going to also start making sure we stretch the front line of the body, cool? All right, so here, you're going to put your foot down. Again, I have flat feet, and I'm supporting my arch for this, cool? I'm going to sit on the foot in the back, I'm going to support my arch, and then I'm going to post my weight on top of my leg, and I'm going to start exploring my range of motion of my ankle, right? And I'm going towards 
um, the last two, three toes. So I'm going towards like the pinky more, keeping the arch, teaching my hip how to go there. Cool. And then I can press it to the side, right? To the side. If you need support, don't be afraid to take a yoga block. Some days I need lots of support. So see, so I'm doing a rotation of the hip. And then I'm going ahead, keep doing that for a couple of times. So here I should already feel the inner thigh because I'm doing a twist right through the joint. Forward, pull. And then from there, we're going to already start going forward and then maybe start going back, right? And then all I'm going to do is tap my toe. I'm not really putting it all the way down because I am super tight this morning. I've been playing a lot of capoeira over the weekend and that just doesn't go away. If you feel more comfortable, you can stand up here and do that, right? So we can come up to the knee. We're still working on that same foot forward, right? And now we're looking for a more upright, proud um, posture. Our foot is flat on the back. I'll show you from the front. But then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wind my hip under. So I'm going to contract my glute like a rock as much as I can. And you should feel the hip flexor. And then I'm going to go forward like that. Without reaching, without going like that, to keep it tight, and I'm just going to reach forward. And you should feel the front of the hip flexor, right? But check this out. If you take it out to the corner, you will feel the corner of the hip flexor, okay? And then you can take it to the side, and you can stretch the side. Or we're gonna go through these ranges of motions. Back to the corner, to the front. And then straight up to the front, wind the hip under, go forward. Cool. If you need extra, we're gonna go one more time, right? So we're going to the front, now we're gonna go to the corner. You can start reaching your hand up, right? This will be extra, so be careful. Reaching it up and slightly angular. This should feel amazing, okay? And then back to the side, and to the side we're going. If this is too hard for you, it's fine, just stay here. Ain't no thing, you need to do what your body needs, not what I'm doing, right? And that takes time, and you need to listen to it, cool? And then we're going down to the other side, same thing. I'm going to start from down here, put my foot down, support that arch. And I'm going to start going forward. And I can even bear weight. And I can go forward slightly until my heel comes up. For those of you that have calf problems, I can pump here a couple of times if my ankle is stuck, right? If I pump here a couple of times with correct toe awareness, it will actually loosen up right away. Okay, so I'm going to the side, exploring that range to the side, forward using my foot, driving through. What does that feel like with contraction? Good, and then you're going to come up and we're going to keep the foot flat. See this foot, how it wants to be on the side? It's because it's um, stuck in dorsiflexion on this side because it's my driving foot. See? Roll the hips under, reach forward. A couple of times in back. Maybe do five in each spot. I like fives today. Cool. Let's go to the corner. And we're keeping this active. We're not just like flopping into the position. We need to keep it active because when it's active, we can tell if we have use of that range or not. Because a passive range is really not a range that you can use during training, right? To the side. And back to the corner and again we're getting the hip joint used to moving in this different planes that it's supposed to move but maybe it's not used to being taken there and this might happen by the way okay make sure you level your hips if you need to keep a synesthetic feel of where they're being tight right let's go one more to the corner my foot is active see I am holding myself through all the points that are on the ground, right? And to the side. And I am aligning my body without too much effort because 
if this is in alignment, it really shouldn't be extra hard, right? And if it is extra hard, then maybe you need another point, another point to rest your body. So be creative with what your, what your body needs and how to get there, right? Let's go forward. I'm gonna start moving the arms. And more here in the middle, roll the hips under, go forward. Good, and we're going to start taking the arm up, down, up again, keeping the midline straight. We're not like taking the belly to the front, especially the people who have the asthesis. We're only going to spice this muscle of lettuce with the glute contraction. And five, and we're going to the corner. So we're going one, and we should be stretching right here in the QL in the back. It's a very spicy muscle to stretch. And then, and then we're going to the corner. Again, if it's hard, stay in the middle and again to the front. Notice I'm not going right up here. I'm actually trying to twist my torso and align myself so that I'm powerful through the posture and through the front. Contraction and it can be small. Maybe sometimes just doing this is enough for today until it loosens. Cool. One more time. This is the last time. Forward. If things tense up, try to relax them and let pain be your guide. This is my um, difficult or misunderstood side. So I know that I need to be extra careful with it because it doesn't like me messing with it too much. It needs it, but it could get angry at me if I take it there too fast, so I need to be careful. From there, bring your knees down. Let's go quickly into a down dog, okay? So we're just going to pull a down dog from here, and I wanna show you my spine real quick. Try to do the other side. So when you come up to your down dog, you don't need to necessarily stretch your legs out, but you do need to stretch your spine out, right? So I'm going to do a movement. Um, you can do it, our time is almost up. So you can do it um, in cat and cow in tabletop position, or you can do it in downward dog, right? So I'm gonna do a spiral wave so we can finish it good here. Um, then we can start activating the body to stand. So a spinal wave would be, we can start doing segmental cat and cow if it's easier for you. So you can go head, remember you have the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, middle, lumbar, coccyx. Then when you go back, you're going to go coccyx, mid-back upper back, head, and back, head, middle, and you can do it the opposite way, you go from the head, right, you can go from the head, and you can even lean back, but for those of you who are more powerful, so we're going to do it like this, for those of you that can't be up, you're just going to rock back and forth. So you're going to sit back into your feet like this and then as you go forward you're going to wave forward into belly down. So you're going to go wave, 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 wave. When you get here you're going to go, the feet are going to fold down, you're going to contract the glute, contract the glute, contract the back. And then you're going to push, the head goes inside, wave, 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 back and sit. Forward, contract the glute, back. I'm gonna show you from the back just because I want you to see what my scapula is doing. So, again, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go forward. Contract, 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 drop. See how I'm holding my butt? I'm holding myself up. Come back, push. Hollow neck, hollow belly, and forward. 
contract the glutes as much as you can. You can open up your legs more like a starfish, and that's going to help. Cool. For those of you that are stronger, you can do it in down dog. Feet are here. Uh, I think this is the better angle. Cool. You're going to come, drop that down. Start the wave from here. Big wave, big wave. When you drop down, you drop down to a float. Good contraction. Head, spine, back, back, mid, upper. Cool, but be kind. If you have any kind of problems with your neck, be kind. Do it in tabletop. Just do it five times and we're good. From there, we're ready to activate and get up. So let's do that. So, we're reaching the end. Let's start with our activation. So we learned about the feet, right? We're going to start opening up the feet. And just to get them used to stepping in, especially if you have flat feet like mine, usually what I do is I step straight, I come down, and I just open up my feet to see it support my arch and to feel it connect with my glute. I know it looks weird, right? Like one of those dances. Back, back, back. And I'm holding the belly in because I just learned how to do that. Or I just taught my body how to do that, right? Come up. All I'm doing is checking the range of my feet, making sure that my feet stay supporting my arch throughout these movements. Come up, open up the toes. Draw circles around the corners of the feet with your body. Should be subtle. Should just be feeling the weight going there. That is about three to each side. And come up to your tip of your toes. And you can do a couple of different ranges. Out. I have to start to fork screwing my hips in. And then I can join my knees and go in. Staying on my toes the whole time. Just three to each place. Good. Now my legs are like, okay, I understand this. So we're going to go. Open up the feet. Step down. Screw sensation. The hips screw in. The femur screws in. The kneecaps go away and then they clamp together as you scoop the hip under, right? So we're here as you scoop the hip under. And then from there, you're going to keep a proud chest. Very tight butt, right? We're just going to start breathing from here. Okay, at first we're going to open up and close, open up and close for three. Then we're going to hold through tension and start moving a little bit, cool, to finish off. So, you can take a broomstick if you need to, okay? If you're able to, this is what you wanna do with your scapula. So the broomstick helps because if you try to break it in half, you see that? All those muscles activating right away, right here, see that? So those muscles are the ones necessary. If you're good about putting tension, fake tension, you're going to imagine that you're on top of a tabletop, right? So you are actually put your thumb in your iliacus, which is your hip bone. Your hip bone is generally what lines up everything, not your meaty hip, it's actually here. So this has to be aligned with your knees, it has to be aligned with your ankles, it has to be aligned with your toe, generally your second toe. So that's like a hand apart. If you have tiny hands like me, maybe a little more. Okay, so I'm going to do a little broomstick for now. For uh, We'll do a total of five breaths, so I'll do three with the broomstick and two without. Cool. Okay, hold it there. Keep the lats packed. Inhale, and you can, let me turn slightly sideways. Inhale, relax. Breathe into power. So it's not exactly a huge relaxation. It's a relaxation, sorry, of the perineum. Cool. Breathe in, relax the perineal. But we're breathing into posture now. Breathe out, act like you're going to break the stick and start looking for contraction through the feet. Down. And hold it very tightly. Can you activate the very deep muscles of your core? Inhale. 
Relax your grip on the stick to keep the posture. Exhale. Look for contraction. One leg may not want to contract as much as the other. That's normal. That was two, three. Exhale. Good. Then we're going to do the other ones without. Go four. When you contract, push. And five. And then when you contract, push. Glute is in. You are tight. Stay in contraction and breathe for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Shake your head. Shake your shoulders. I know it looks weird, but it feels good, I promise. And start your ragdoll to finish. So your ragdoll is going to start at the head. Go to the sides. Start waving down. Keep a slight bend at your knees, so keep your knees soft. Make sure you're connecting your feet to your glutes so you can see that area. Feel that area really opening up. And remember, it's a connection with your body. So throughout this, you're paying attention. You're understanding your map. You're seeing the things that work and the things that don't work and what works better for you. Cool? From there, look for a straight back with an inhale. Exhale, drop. Inhale, come up for a breath. Sorry guys, my hair is annoying me. Come up slow, don't flip your hair like that, it's weird. Down, and back into your feet. Move way in the back. Inhale again, come up. Down, and reach like an offering. It should feel amazing on the hamstrings. And then come in, and then just real quick, before we finish, let's come down. Let's sit. So, we are in this place right now where we felt the power in our body. We're going to breathe. We're going to honor all that it does for us because remember, your body does a lot. And we're going to take the tension away even more. So right where you are, contract as much as you can and drop it down. Two. Three. On the fourth, tense up. And let's put the arms down. Keep the tension, start going slowly. Breathe so that your scalp may breathe. So that the pores in your head can relax. It can let out all the stress and steam that's in there. Breathe so that the muscles on your forehead can relax. Your eyes can rest inside of their sockets. And life doesn't seem so hard to look at. Breathe again to feel the sensation coming down towards your face. Well, it's almost easy just to be, and you didn't even realize how much tension was there. Relax your tongue inside your mouth. Keep breathing down and breathing easy. Long breaths through the nose. Go towards the neck muscles. If you need to tuck your chin back a couple of times to make sure you're at your center. Shake those shoulders off. Breathe the tension down in your neck. Like a warm shower down on your shoulders. Like sunlight spreading through your chest. It's easier to breathe. Your back muscles are relaxed. Your body's happy. You open up a communication line with it for an amazing, successful day of attention and movement. This is the first step to your relationship. As we go down, we notice our insides are nice and relaxed because we did all that movement. 
your hips start to relax and you're feeling grounded. You're feeling here and you're feeling grateful because you, unlike many in the world, woke up today. You had another opportunity to have this wonderful life in a wonderful place with wonderful people. Just feel gratitude. And thank you for being here with me. Open up your eyes slightly, bring yourself back, shake it off, wake up that body. Thank you so much for being here. Have an awesome day. I appreciate you all being here with the challenge. I wanted to do so much more for your body, but I want to make sure, I am noticing, you guys are teaching me, that the simple is important. So we're going to make sure we know how to breathe. I thought this would be more useful for your day. This can be done to wake you up towards the day and to open up that connection line with your body because a relationship with your body is something that is forever. It's something that you will work on forever, right? As it gets easier, it's it's just amazing just to know what it is saying to you and, and what it wants and when your body needs rest and when to push the ego aside and um, listen to what you need for you inside, right? We have this amazing amount of knowledge inside of us and um, we just get in the way because we're constantly just so busy that we don't stop to breathe, right? So thank you for breathing with me, for moving with me. Have a wonderful day. E muito axé, muito amor. Obrigada. Tchau, gente. If you have any questions, you can drop it down in the group. Um, I think it's much easier to keep track. Thank you so much. Valeu. The baby just woke up. The time was perfect. Bye.